I guess a, a, a relatively conservative forecast is that for the first half of this year, we could see it breach 26, which if you look at, you know, sort of technically, that seems to be a bit of a ceiling. I think it's going to breach that in the next few months, this next quarter. Um, and then once we breach that in a meaningful way, I think that's going to start to become a new floor. And so we're going to really see it stay above 26. And I think in the second half of this year, we could easily see $28, maybe better. But for now, I'm willing to say we'll see probably 28 uh, before the year is out. Gold, um, my goodness, at this point, I think that this year we're going to probably see 2500 I think that, that becomes realistic. Peter Krauth the best-selling author of The Great Silver Bull and renowned expert in precious metals investing, forecasts a bullish trajectory for gold, projecting prices to reach $2,500 this year. Additionally, he anticipates silver to remain above $26 and get $28 or higher in the latter half of the year. Gold prices surged recently, supported by a decline in the U.S. dollar, as investors awaited upcoming data to assess inflation trends crucial for understanding the Federal Reserve's approach to interest rates. Conversely, silver experienced a slight decline, reaching $24.57. Krauth emphasizes the increasing industrial applications of silver, with approximately 60% of demand attributed to industrial consumption. This trend potentially reduces the amount of silver available for investment, influencing its price dynamics. Global silver demand is expected to rise by 1% due to a projected record high in industrial demand and a turnaround in jewelry and silverware consumption. The Silver Institute forecasts a 4% increase in industrial demand, reaching a record 690 million ounces in 2024. Furthermore, Krauth highlights structural deficits in the silver market over the past four years, indicating a shortage in supply compared to demand. This deficit has led to a drawdown of secondary inventories, including those in futures markets and silver ETFs. Total silver mine production is currently at its second lowest level in a decade, signaling an undeniable undervaluation of silver. As mine supply shrinks, industrial demand surges, suggesting that the current silver price does not reflect market realities. A recent silver market report confirms the growing physical silver shortage, a strong catalyst for silver prices in 2024 and 2025. Come along as we explore the valuable insights provided by Peter Krauth. Don't miss out on our latest updates. Subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you for tuning in. If you look at the silver market, it, it really is gradually becoming more of an, an industrial metal. We're already now at about 60% of, of uh, consumption or, or demand going towards uh, industry. But that just makes uh, the, um, uh, in other words, more silver being consumed by industry leaves less silver available for investment. So I think that when you get the investment demand really kick in, to really kick in, that's when um, you're going to have uh, an even bigger uh, effect from that because you simply have less silver being made available for investment. A lot of it is uh, getting consumed. And as we know, uh, if you follow the silver industry, consumed silver uh, by industrial, the industrial side, very, uh, very little of that ends up getting recycled just because uh, so much is used in small quantities and the cost to recycle is doesn't justify the pursuit of, of, of getting the silver back out and, and back into the market. There are different things. I, I have uh, a theory of, as to why the silver price has sort of been seen capped for the last few years. And um, I think that's only going to last for a little while longer. It's a question of really secondary inventories and where they're going and how much of that is actually left. You've got really two sides to the to the investment demand, or sorry, to, to overall demand. You've got industrial and then you've got um, investment demand. Anything beyond that, so that's sort of, let's say, when in a year where you have a silver surplus, uh, goes into secondary inventories. That gets stashed into the futures markets. It goes into silver ETFs, for example, and it accumulates there. But in the last four years, we've had deficits and structural deficits in the silver market. A structural deficit doesn't mean that the consumers, especially the industrial consumers, are not getting their silver. They're still getting it from somewhere. And it, it, mo the most obvious source is that they're getting it from these secondary inventories. So if you look at the major, um, the major futures markets and the ETFs, so the major futures markets would be the COMEX, the LBMA and Shanghai, 
and then the, the global e silver ETFs, you see something really interesting. So the pattern is for the last four years, those inventories have been steadily drawing down. And if you look at overall inventories in, in, the, three, uh, in the three futures markets, they're down about 40%. Now, inventories are not all available for delivery. It's only what we call registered silver in those markets that's available for delivery. And the registered silver is actually down closer to 70% in the last three to four years. And, you know, I do obviously my own proprietary research on, on the silver side. And if you look at the silver ETFs, like I say, they've seen their... Um, inventories gradually fall. Now, SLV is the world's largest silver ETF. And if you go back to inception, which was 2006, there has not been, until the last few years, there has not been a sustained period where if the silver price was either rising or going sideways, that their holdings, so the, the quantity of silver backing that ETF was actually falling. That's never happened. It's only started to happen in the last few years. So prior to that, even if you had big corrections in the silver price, you would see very small and very temporary drops in their silver inventories. Now in the last few years, you've seen something like 30 to 40% drop in, in the silver that backs uh, the SLV and, and silver ETFs globally. So bottom line is this, I think that in both the futures uh, markets and with the silver ETFs, you have large players who go in, who, who need to consume the silver, are buying long futures contracts, standing for delivery when those mature, and or buying silver ETFs and trading in their units for, uh, for the physical silver, taking delivery. Non-yielding bullion soared to a historic peak of $2,222.39 last week, propelled by Federal Reserve policymakers suggesting an anticipated rate reduction by three quarters of a percentage point by the end of 2024. Spot Gold saw a 0.5% increase to $2,182.77 per ounce after surging by 1.3% earlier in the day. According to Peter Krauth, a sustained gold rally gains credibility when observed across significant currencies. Recent all-time highs in gold prices against various currencies, including the Swiss franc, indicate a potentially enduring breakout and the likelihood of further highs. Data from the World Gold Council reveals that Turkish demand for bars and coins surged by 88% in 2023, with jewelry demand also experiencing a notable 14% increase. Despite an aggressive cycle of tightening monetary policy since June, which has pushed bank deposit rates higher, they still need to significantly dampen gold's appeal for households. Krauth suggests that economic conditions in countries such as Turkey and Egypt signal a significant shift towards silver as an alternative to gold due to affordability concerns. The increased imports of silver in nations like India and Turkey underscore rising demand, potentially impacting global markets. One of the questions I keep getting is, is this, is this really going to be sustained? And frankly, one of the interesting right. indicators is to look at what happens with, with currencies versus gold, for example. And you typically can have uh, a more sustained gold rally. You can have more confidence in the rally if it's happening in all the major currencies. There was one holdout. Now, a few weeks back, we had all-time highs in, in gold and that, you know, consisted uh, or stayed consistent for, for several days, a week, in fact. The last holdout was the, the Swiss franc, uh, oddly enough. And we had that a few days ago. We had a breakout and to an all-time high in the Swiss franc. So now that we have that, we have a sort of you know one uh, big indicator that we can that this this breakout is likely to be sustained and to lead on to, to newer highs. Turkey, as you said, um, something like 65, 67 percent annual inflation. The price of silver in Turkey, the Turkish lira, has uh, is up seven times in the last three years. And then you have Egypt, where um, gold is traditionally being used as a gift for uh, newlywed brides, uh, for newborns. And they're saying in Egypt, silver is the new gold. They're turning to, to silver instead because they're finding it too expensive. The price of silver has uh, has doubled in the past couple of years in, in Egypt. So, you know, that shows how the demand really is is shifting. And you have uh, India has, uh, has seen its imports of silver soaring. Turkey has seen its imports of silver soaring. Um, really, uh, this is sort of staying under the radar, I think, for a little while. 
but it's going to change. I, I, I even put, you know, together um, for, for my, uh, my presentation in, in, a recent, uh, in a recent conference, I looked at what some of the, the dynamic was in terms of uh, forecasts and then eventual um, actual results. So I call it the silver 2023 realities. The supply forecast for silver was that uh, it was actually going to grow in 2023 by 2%. In fact, it fell by 2%. Industrial demand thought they thought it was going to grow by 4%. It was revised. The growth was revised up 8%. Solar demand was forecast to be 140 million ounces of silver last year. It was revised to 190 million ounces. And then the supply deficit for 2023 was forecast at 142 million ounces. And then they revised that to 194 million ounces. These are really big misses. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's very much um, off. I think that the market is very much being underestimated. And I think the pressure on the price uh, from the supply that these industrial users are able to get from this, these secondary inventories that I explained earlier, that's got a limited life. If I had to guess, I'd say 12, 18 months, anything could happen in the meantime, but if nothing, you know, explosive happens to silver before then, which, which I certainly doubt. But if it did, um, I think that's that's going to be the limit of these secondary supplies. People need to understand the silver market. It is uh, it's its own animal, uh, and I like to see silver is a patience trade. It's kind of like Bitcoin and uranium. And if you look at what happened to both of those assets in the last few years. They just moved sideways, 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 and then exploded higher. The last quarter of 2023, the first quarter of 2024, approximately, both of those assets doubled um, in price. And so it took a matter of, of months before that happened. I see silver doing something similar. When it exactly that will, you know, and what will the trigger be? Hard to say, but, you know, I have an interesting quote from uh, someone, a lot of people who follow this space know, Rick Rule. He said, the silver market... Uh, the silver equity market resembles that of uranium in 2022. It's stupidly cheap. And so, I mean, I could, I could hardly agree more. It has been a profitable year for gold and silver investors. However, both metals, in line with their demand, have seen varying degrees of price rise. In the international market, gold returned over 13.2%, and silver was marginally up 3.6%. What specific factors or catalysts will most influence driving their prices to the projected targets in 2024 and beyond? Share your thoughts in the comments section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.